Artistic genius can be an odd thing. Like this for example. Not long after you start a project, another brilliant idea enters your head and you move on to it. Leonardo da Vinci is best known for his creations of his day, but he is also well known among his customers for his inability to deliver on promised artwork. One of the pieces of art he proposed was the largest equestrian sculpture in the world, but it never surpassed a clay model. However, some artists do start sculpting, but, for whatever reason, leave it unfinished. Here are 10 of the most amazing, if cancelled, half-made statues ever. Number 10. Apollo David. Michelangelo was someone younger than Leonardo, and the two of them were rivals vying to create the most impressive work of his time. When Leonardo taunts Michelangelo, he in turn calls Leonardo to fight by saying the horse modeler that you, who, unable to throw a bronze statue, will have to give up in shame. But Michelangelo was, as we will see, another artist who left the artwork unfinished. Michelangelo's Italy was divided into many warring nations. After the siege, the Pope installed a brutal governor of the city of Florence, who ordered Michelangelo to make a statue. When a new duke took over the city, the statue was abandoned and Michelangelo left the place. He left the work so unfinished that even the subject of the statue was debated. Was it a figure who pulled an arrow from its quiver, as Apollo did, or did he get the sling to kill Goliath, as David would? After all it is a beautiful work of art. According to some people for sure. Number 9. Atlas Slave. Michelangelo was famous for his non-finito style. Vasari, who wrote one of the first books of art history, said that the works he envisioned were of such a nature that he found it impossible to express such grandiose and awesome conceptions with his hands, and he often abandoned his works, or rather ruined many of them, for fear that he might seem less than perfect. When Pope Julius II, known as the Fearsome Pope, turned his attention to art, he planned big things. Among other achievements he brought to fruition was the Sistine Chapel paintings of Michelangelo. When Julius wanted a tomb he called on Michelangelo again. The Pope wanted a mausoleum worthy of a great man, and he commissioned Michelangelo to surround his tomb with sculptures. Among these were to be a series of figures known as the prisoners. The awakening slave, the bearded slave, the young slave, and the atlas slave were meant to adorn Julius's tomb, but were never completed. Today they stand as human forms attempting to struggle free of their marble, but are prized by historians of art for the clues they reveal about Michelangelo's technique. Number 8. Tade Tondo. There is only one marble sculpture by Michelangelo in the UK, and it is one of the prized possessions of the Royal Academy. The Virgin and Child with the Infant Saint John is yet another unfinished work by Michelangelo, though it remains a beautiful work of art. Also known as the Tade Tondo, a tondo being round work or art, it shows the rapid and hard blows that Michelangelo used to create his sculptures. On the reverse of the work there is a thin crack that may have been caused by Michelangelo's hammer blows, and there is a missing section that may be another mark of his quick work. The Tade Tondo has recently been in the news because of discussion of whether it should be sold by the Royal Academy to secure its finances. Some have valued the sculpture at pounds 100 million. Number 7. Rondanini Pieta. Michelangelo's Pieta in the Vatican is one of the most famous sculptures in the world. Showing the Virgin Mary with Jesus's body after the crucifixion, it is a hugely moving work of art. But it is not the only time Michelangelo sculpted the scene. His last work of art, left uncompleted at his death, shows the two figures in a completely different pose. The sculpture as it stands today is not the first version he had tried to make from the block of marble he used. Becoming dissatisfied with the results Michelangelo hacked away all his previous work except Jesus's right arm. Michelangelo once said I value highly the work done by a great master, even though he may have spent little time over it. Works are not to be judged by the amount of useless labor spent on them, but by the worth and skill and mastery of their author. So perhaps he would not be sad that so many of his works remained unfinished at his death. Number 6. Unfinished Obelisk at the Swan. The ancient Egyptians loved to erect monumental works of art. Among the largest were the free-standing obelisks that scraped the sky long before modern cities began erecting skyscrapers. The largest obelisk ever discovered measured around 42 meters, 140 feet, tall. It would have been a third larger than any other obelisk. Unfortunately for the Egyptians who were making it the obelisk fractured while it was being cut from the rock. 
The obelisk was commissioned by the controversial female pharaoh Hatshepsut around 3,500 years ago. It was as the obelisk was being cut from the bedrock that the cracks began to appear. What was a terrible outcome for the Egyptians was fortunate for archaeologists as it reveals how they were made. Hollows carved into the rock show the points where the craftsmen hammered dry wooden wedges into them. The wedges were then soaked in water that caused them to expand. The pressure of the wood on the stone forced it to crack. These cracks were useful, the ones that destroyed the obelisk were less useful. Number 5. Monument to Humanity. Any mention of the history between Turkey and Armenia is bound to cause trouble. There seems to be abundant evidence that Turkish Ottoman forces between 1914 and 1923 forced Armenians out of their territory. Disputed figures put the death toll at around 1.5 million. The Turkish government strongly denies any wrongdoing, but many refer to this period as the Armenian Genocide. It is against this background that Ney Felipe Oglu, mayor of a Turkish town, decided to build a monument that would help to heal the wounds of those events. The monument to humanity shows two figures facing each other and would have stood 100 feet tall. Opposition was immediate, and some thought having one figure bowing its head to the other showed that Turkey was in some way responsible. Building of the statue was never completed. Laying in the dust at the base of the monument is a large hand, called the hand of friendship that it seems will now never be put in place. Number 4. El Giganti. The monumental statues of Easter Island are famous around the world. The enigmatic Moi, also known as Easter Island Head, though they have bodies, come in a variety of sizes. The largest one standing is known as Pero and is 10 meters, or 33 feet, tall. Yet there was one that would have dwarfed it. If it had ever left the quarry. El Giganti was over twice as tall as Pero at 72 feet tall. The builders of the Moi were perhaps a bit too ambitious when they started making El Giganti. It weighs in at around 170 tons which the Easter Islanders would have struggled to move. They lacked wheels and metal, so would have had to use sledges and logs to move and erect the statue. Today El Giganti lays where it always has, in the quarry where it was being carved. Never finished and never moved it remains facing up at the sky. This is actually a more dignified ending that most Moi faced. Some time in the 18th century the Moi were all pushed over so that their faces were in the dirt. Number 3. Grandfather Cuts Loose the Ponies. David Gobiter erected a statue of galloping horses to celebrate 100 years of Washington being a state. The multiple life-sized horses each weigh over 1,000 pounds and as they stand are one of the most viewed pieces of art in the state. But they are not the complete sculpture as the artist envisioned it. According to the original plan the horses were supposed to be running out of a basket. The horses were supposed to be a gift from the grandfather spirit, who would declare creatures of this planet, behold, a great basket. I send this basket, bearing the gift of life, to all corners of the universe. Now, take these ponies, I am cutting them loose. They will inspire a spirit of free will. They will be a companion for work and play on this planet. Unfortunately funds ran out long before the intricate basket could be completed. The basket would have been decorated by local artists to show scenes of people in nature. The artist has not yet given up. Recently he hoped to raise one million dollars to complete his sculpture. Number 2. Kauros of Apollonas. Ancient Greek statues, like ancient Greek culture, had a fondness for naked young men. Kauroi were statues that can be found throughout the Greek world. Over the centuries the development of Greek art can be followed in the changes of style shown in these kauroi. Most of them are life-size, but some of them could be far larger. One kauros found at Apollonas on the island of Naxos would have stood 10 meters tall if it had stood at all. It was begun in the 8th century BC but never left the quarry. This monumental statue also departs from the normal form of kauroi by showing an older man with a beard. Some archaeologists think this sculpture would have been a god, possibly Apollo or Dionysus. Why the statue was abandoned by its creators is unknown. Some think that the cracks in it were the reason it was left there. Others think that they realized it would be too heavy to move to its final site. Number 1. Crazy Horse. Not this horse, okay. Okay. Crazy Horse was a war leader of the Oglala, one of the Lakota bands and part of the Sioux Alliance, in the 19th century. Respected by his own people and his enemies, he was one of the most famous Native Americans of his time. 
In the 1930s Henry Standing Bear began to plan a monument to Crazy Horse that would rival the presidential faces on Mount Rushmore. He wrote to Polish sculptor Korczak Ziolkowski, my fellow chiefs, and I would like the white man to know that the red man has great heroes, too. Work on the statue started with a blast of dynamite in 1948. In the intervening years millions of tons of rock have been removed from the site or the sculpture emerges from the mountain. Ziolkowski continued to direct work on Crazy Horse until he died at the site in 1982. Work continues at the moment, but no one can say for sure when the monument will be complete. When the statue is completed, it will stand 172 meters, 563 feet, tall, making it the second largest statue in the world. All of the faces on Mount Rushmore would fit onto Crazy Horse's head.